So here it is, the new full frame Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. I've been using it and testing it for about a month now, but I've also been reading comments online about this camera and well, yeah, I feel like a lot of people do not understand this camera and some people well, I don't know, they just seem to have a severe case of TikTok brain or something. Yeah, seriously. And I mean, I get it. On a Sunday afternoon, lying on the couch, I also have only two brain cells turned on. One for eating pizza and one for playing video games. But then when I go online and I want to make a comment, I turn all the other brain cells back on, you know? And yeah, a lot of people don't. But I mean, what else is new, right? And obviously I'm not talking about you. People watching my channel have all their brain cells turned on all the time, obviously. But um, anyway, <laughs> so first let's talk about everything this camera has to offer and then I'll tell you why I think it's so misunderstood and who this camera is for. Let's do it. Okay, look, it's not a sexy camera, okay? I'll give you that. It's big, it's clunky, it feels very plasticky, but the main complaint I saw in all the comments when they released the cinema camera 6K was that it's not a cube. You know, like the red Komodo, for example, and a lot of people apparently were expecting one of those modular cube designs. And I get it, of course. I would have loved it too, but I think that it was more important for Blackmagic Design to keep the price low here. So using the same design as all their other cameras makes sense. Because remember, you get a full frame cinema camera that shoots internal RAW for $2,595, right? And also, this is their first full frame camera, so I'm pretty sure that we're gonna see a full frame 6K Pro, a full frame Ursa probably, or maybe something else, a completely new design. But of course, that being said, I do understand it doesn't feel great, it's plasticky, it's clunky, it feels a bit old school. So yeah, like I always say in all my videos, it's up to you to decide what's more important. It also has a fan, so overheating shouldn't be a problem at all. It's winter here now, so I haven't been able to test it, but I would be really surprised if this camera overheats. And I'll be taking it to the Dominican Republic in a few months, so you know, I'll test it over there and then I'll let you know. Then the screen, which is also subject to a lot of complaints online, because it doesn't flip out like the Sony FX3 or A7S3 or Canon R5, you can only tilt it like this, you know, facing up. But in my opinion, that's enough if you also consider who this camera is intended for. And I'll get back to that later in the video. Now, the quality of the screen is excellent. It's big, bright, and I mean, you don't need a monitor for most things. If I compare the quality of the screen to my Sony A7S3, yikes, I mean, yeah. Sure, it's more flexible, but for some serious filmmaking, you definitely need a monitor. So, you know, again, what's more important to you? The quality of the screen of the Cinema Camera 6K is a lot better than the A7S III. And when it comes to the connections, everything most people need is there. Full-size HDMI, two mini XLR ports, there are no internal ND filters, but like I said, this is their first full-frame camera, so I'm pretty sure there will be a pro version of this camera with internal ND filters at some point. But, you know, I've also heard complaints about the quality of the internal ND filters of the Pocket 6K Pro, so maybe it's a good thing that you can buy your own choice of ND filters? I don't know, again, that's a personal preference. So yeah, all in all, no, it's not a sexy camera, it's big, it's clunky, it's plasticky, but you do get everything you need for a very, very good price. And that's also important to a lot of people. But yeah, I get it. It won't win any awards for like, you know, design and build quality. Now, that would be a real problem if also the image quality was poop. And it's definitely not. But before I show you that, I wanna show you something else that's also definitely not poop. The sponsor of this video, Motion VFX. I get questions all the time about where I get my animated titles and my motion graphics, and well, the answer is Motion VFX. Transitions, titles, LUTs, creator toolboxes, they have everything. Maybe you're looking for something to spice up your flashy music videos, or maybe a documentary, and they keep adding new stuff all the time. That's the great thing about Motion VFX. M-Style newspaper, for example, to make your videos look like you know, a Netflix style true crime documentary or M Trip for your travel and adventure videos. There's a plugin or title pack or transition pack for everyone. And it's all super easy to use, drag and drop, then customize it and done. So go check them out, the link is in the description. And of course, thank you so much Motion VFX for supporting my channel. Okay, and now let's take a look at what the image quality of the Cinema Camera 6K, the full frame Cinema Camera 6K looks like. 
So the first thing you need to know is that I've been testing it in its purest form. You know, no accessories, just the camera and a lens. This lens, the Seven Artisans 35mm Cine lens. And I'll put a link to the review of this lens in the description. Now, we put it there. Um, yeah, I must say the image quality coming out of this camera it's incredible, it's beautiful. And that's really the strength of this camera. I never thought I would say this, but I like it better than the image of my Sony a7S III, for example, or the Canon R5. It just has something that I like, some something, I don't know, dare I call it cinematicness? I don't know, it's a subjective thing, of course, but in my opinion, it looks better. And I'm talking about the overall look and the pleasiness of the image, you know? It also looks sharper, but of course that's because it's 6K compared to 4K, so obviously it's sharper. There's also plenty of dynamic range. I think it's comparable to the a7S III, FX3. Uh, most high contrast scenes aren't a problem at all. And well, yeah, I'm also surprised by how much detail there is in the shadows. I really like that. Now, that being said, some people have complained about the fact that the image of the cinema camera 6K is noisier than, for example, the FX3. And that's true, but that's because it shoots B-RAW, so there's no noise reduction. And cameras like the Sony FX3 and a7S III have internal noise reduction. So, I mean, when it comes to noise, you can't compare internal RAW to internal compressed codecs with noise reduction. And shooting in B-RAW, for me, is the biggest revelation of, of this camera. I love it. It's amazing, especially the combination B-RAW with DaVinci Resolve. I mean, you have to combine it, there's no other way. But I never thought it would make that big of a difference. You can really push the image to the max, it's incredible. And the workflow is also smooth and, you know? Now, I don't know how B-RAW compares to ProRes RAW, for example, but Resolve doesn't support ProRes RAW, so, I mean, I don't know. But it doesn't really matter, because if you buy this camera, you're gonna shoot B-RAW and you're gonna use Resolve. Uh, what else? Low light. In low light, this camera struggles a little bit, but that's what you would expect, especially because I have a Sony a7S III and, you know, the a7S III and the FX3 are low light beasts. They have a second base ISO of 12,800. That's, that's just insane. And the Cinema Camera 6K has a second base ISO of 3,200. But in my opinion, the fact that it shoots B-RAW makes up for that a bit, because you can really push it to the limit, the image. But it's no low light beast, so don't expect it to be. It's also not advertised as one, so I mean, you know. Um, but I didn't encounter any real problems when shooting in low light. Of course, I'm not gonna take this camera to shoot in moonlight without any artificial lighting, but in normal low light conditions, it works. You just have to be a little bit more careful, you know, a bit more, yeah, careful. Especially if you're used to a camera like the Sony a7S III. But overall, I love the image. It's sharp, 6K, plenty of dynamic range, and it has that X factor. I don't know how to call it. Maybe I do. I'm just gonna say it. It looks more cinematic. There, I said it, you forced me. Okay, uh, let me put the camera here now because it's ranting time. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of commotion when the cinema camera, the full frame cinema camera 6K released, especially online, but that's in my opinion because a lot of people do not understand that camera. First of all, you can't have everything. Swivel screen, internal NDs, modular cube design, and then all that for a super low price. That's impossible. You can't make a camera that's perfect for everyone. But that's what everyone expected. And Blackmagic Design went for great image quality for a great price and they had to sacrifice build quality and design and a few other things. But it's not like it's bad, you know? It just feels a bit... Yeah. It just, just feels a bit old school. Also, another thing, that camera is not an upgrade or an update. Some people were like, oh, I was really planning on upgrading my Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro to the new full frame version. But no, it's not an upgrade. It's not like the, the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro is here and then this one is, is above it. No, it's here. Wait, here. They're next to each other. This is Blackmagic Design getting into full frame, their first full frame camera, with an L mount also, you know? And it's not a Pocket 6K Pro upgrade. This is a new lineup. Unless they go all in on full frame now, of course, and like just discontinue their Super 35 cameras. Well, yeah, that's possible too, but 
let's hope not, we'll see. But you know, I think in the future we'll see more full frame cameras, just a lineup of full frame cameras. And it's not like this is an upgrade, this is another lineup. And a lot of people don't understand that. And maybe we'll see those modular cube designs next year or I don't know, I would love to see it. And then another thing I want to point out, something that a lot of people do not understand is that this is a true cinema camera, a budget cinema camera, but still a cinema camera. A lot of people want to compare it to the FX3, for example, which is marketed as a cinema camera. But let's be honest here, the FX3 is not a cinema camera. It's a very capable camera, a very, very capable camera, but it's not a cinema camera. In my opinion, it's more like a top of the line content creator camera or like content creator slash hybrid cinema camera, something like that, I don't know. But not a true cinema camera. The FX3 is a camera for people who also want to be in front of the camera. And this camera is for people who only want to be behind the camera. I think that's the big difference. There's no continuous autofocus, there's no IBIS or anything like that. It shoots internal B-RAW, it has false color, shutter angle, you know, all those things that make it a cinema camera. It has a great menu designed for filmmaking. So I think that's super important to realize. And the Cinema Camera 6K offers great quality for a great price for people who want to be behind the camera. Filmmakers, not content creators. Is it perfect? No, not at all. But what camera is, right? Just depends what you want to do with it. This camera is great for a lot of people, but not great for just as many. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Rant over and see you in the next one.